Well, hi folks, this is Darren with My RV Works. Today we're in Agnew, Washington, which is just west of Squim before you get to Port Angeles. Uh, we're here to work on this furnace. There's nothing wrong with a furnace. And I've got a lot of furnace videos. Uh, we've got a playlist right there for you. You can look at the, all the furnace videos we have. We've got over 30. Um, I don't have a video on doing an annual service on a furnace. And so that's what this customer is wanting. They want, there's nothing wrong with the furnace, but since we're going into the winter time, they want the furnace inspected. They want it checked. They want to verify that all the pieces, parts uh, are working correctly. So that's the nature of this video. That's what we're going to be doing today. Um, so uh, unfortunately this furnace doesn't have the access to gain access to it from the outside. So we're gonna have to pull the whole furnace out. Some of you, you're, you're gonna have an access on the outside and some of you, you're gonna have to take your whole furnace out. Um, there's a difference between removing a furnace for service and removing a furnace for an annual inspection. Uh, removing a furnace for service, you may not need to take this outside exhaust port off. Um, you might just need to get to a sail switch or get to a control board. But when you're going to do an annual service, now we're going to really get in into the, the bits and pieces of this thing. We're really going to be inspecting, uh, paying particular attention to the burn chamber. Of course, we're going to be cleaning any dander or any dirt or anything that's in the impellers and all that kind of stuff. That goes without saying. But there's things we're going to be looking at. We're going to make sure that the electrode gap is set correctly. We're going to be looking at the burner itself. A lot of times, if there's ever any oil in the line, um, on the LP side um, and that comes from the LP pigtail hose there's a lot of misinformation out there uh, where this LP is coming from they're saying it's coming from the factory that they overfill the tanks none of that is correct the LP it, the oil that would make it into your LP lines is coming from the pigtail the rubber pigtail that is connected to your high pressure side on your regulator okay so file that away and you can argue with me all you want to but <laughs> that's where it's coming from folks um, I only say that because there's been a lot of forums out where people are adamantly, positively sure that at the refinery they're putting oil in it. But all that is is hydrogen and carbon. There's no oil component to that. And overfilling the propane cylinders is, not, is next to impossible to do. So there's no, there's no way that it's coming. And even if they overfilled the propane cylinders, they're just overfilling with hydrogen or with, with um, um, carbon and hydrogen. So it's like, where's that coming from? I got a whole video there on why we use propane and all the chemical properties of propane if you want to watch that one. We're talking about the furnace here and um, so what I was talking about, we're going to be looking at the burn chamber, uh, we're going to be looking at the, um, the, uh, the, the burner itself. Um, that's what made me think of the propane because sometimes this is a suburban furnace and they have this thing that's long and skinny and I have seen on the bottom where a hole is burned in the bottom of those and that hole is there because there's oil in the line. We just talked about where that oil comes from. We're going to be looking at that. The only way to see those things is to actually take the whole furnace apart. That's the only way. Um, we're also going to be checking the LP pressure to make sure that the LP pressure is within specification. Um, and we'll be taking this exhaust port off. The butyl tape is supposed to be like a figure, a segmented figure eight, top, bottom, middle, and both sides. So we're going to be taking this exhaust port off right here to make sure that that is in fact done. Um, if we were pulling the furnace just for service, we may not need to pull this exhaust port off, but this is an inspection. This isn't, it's not to fix something. So. Um, Enough of that, let's get started. Now we're going to be um, taking this furnace out uh, from the inside. So um, let's get busy. So here's a, a tip I've discovered, uh, plastic chisel, take your screws out. Sometimes these stick really well. And um, using a plastic chisel, you can usually get in there and break through that um, sealant or putty tape or whatever they've got on there. And if it slides out, then it's not um, gouging into the RV body. Now, I have had some comments on folks where these rust in place, and uh, that is unfortunate that that does that. I've had it do it to me too. And um, we might have that happen to this one. And um, PB Blaster seems to be a good product for that. Um, but even still, I've had them where you just can't, it's rusted on there. And um, all the more reason to inspect this thing every year, right? If you were to give it off, you could do a um, high temperature anti-seize and um, that'll work when you put it back together. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get, it's, I've got it loose on the bottom, but so here's the point is a little plastic chisel gets in there and it doesn't hurt anything, but we got to get this off. And I don't think it's going to be seized. But if it is, like I said, PB Blaster, and just let that, give that a chance to work. And um, just keep working, 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 working. But even with that, sometimes I've seen where I just, you just can't get them off. And if that's the case, 
I might have to sacrifice this piece here just to get the furnace out. And then when I get it on my workbench, I have a better chance to work on it. And then you have to buy a new one of these. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get something to kind of bang this thing without my hands and kind of break that seal right there along the top. So I have this off and in my inspection, I've already noticed something that it's missing. Okay. So that's why we inspect these things. According to Suburban, which is what this is, what their ins installation manual state is that they want butyl tape around all sides, but also a piece right here. And this one's missing it. It's like they put it here, here. In fact, I don't even really see a whole lot of butyl tape on this, but they want butyl tape in this like segmented figure eight position right through here as well. And so in our inspection, we've seen that they don't have a piece here and it's almost like they just put the sealant around. So, um, that's why we inspect. So this one came out pretty easily, but some of you, where it's gonna rust is right in here. This is a Suburban, okay? The Atwood and the Medics, they're gonna rust a different way for you. But uh, where it rusts is right in here. So if you look at that profile and visualize how it's rusting, it's rusting onto that. Um, I'll make a point of this plastic piece. Suburban makes them in different lengths, okay? So when this is inserted, you want to make sure that this goes in to that I think it's about an inch or something like that. It's in this in spec manual. So that we're also inspecting that. Now this does seat in there pretty nicely. So we know there, it's going in that much distance. Okay. So we haven't even pulled the furnace out and we're already doing our annual inspection. Okay. So we've got a pass and a fail. The pass is that this is long enough. Okay. In other words, I wouldn't want it to just barely cover. That's not correct. Okay. So that's the pass. This is this piece here is, is long enough to fit on the top. The fail is that they didn't put the butyl tape in that segmented figure eight. Um, it was that segmented or is it, you know what I mean? Like the old gas pump with the little, yeah, segments, eight segment display. Yeah. Okay. So you want there to be there. So this does not have that. So we will be doing that. Now, again, we could take our plastic chisel and you see how this, it's just, uh, crumbly. Um, so I would assume that a lot of you, if you go look at your furnace, all this has rotten and, and you have water on the inside. I guess what? I'm going to say this over and over again. This is why we do an annual inspection. So when we're done here, we're going to have nice new butyl tape right here and make sure that, um, and we'll, we'll clean all this up. Uh, we'll clean this up and, um, make this pretty, but, um, so in your inspection, this is all part of it, making sure that this ex gas port, this, this exhaust port is in fact seated correctly. We want to get the air in and out properly, and we want to make sure that, that there's no ingress for water to get inside. Because this, the only place that they had it was along the top, and that's the part that I had fought it, but they don't have it along the side. And um, it looks like water may have even started to get inside of here. So that's part of the inspection. Moving on, let's go to the inside now. Okay, so now we're on the inside. Uh, this manufacturer has put this furnace here in the kitchen area up on the shelf above the water heater. That's fine. Um, oftentimes you'll see furnaces with refrigerators or water heaters because it's they're both gas consuming appliances. So we've already turned off the LP from the front. Okay, so we can, we can, um, there's a couple ways. You could turn a stove on to get the LP out of the line or just burp it in here. Um, this one is ducted. I'm sorry. It's yeah. They have the ducts on it. Now these, they're like, you, you turn it and there's a notch and it comes off. So let me get one off and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay. So if you look, you'll see a notch right here and then a flat spot. So you just kind of twist it and these come off. You don't need to mess with the hose clamp. You just twist it a little bit and the thing comes off. Okay, so just like that, we've got one, two, three, four, five um, ducts taken off. A lot of times they'll screw that in place. Okay, so we're gonna get a square. Okay. Okay. 
they have the uh, Wago connectors. I am a fan of the Wago connectors. Um, Wago, Wago, whatever. Um, looks like they got some whiskers sticking out on this one here. So that's not correct. So in our inspection, we found some whiskers sticking out. It turns out that yellow is ground, so that's not a problem. But still, I don't like to see whiskers sticking out of... Whiskers, what I mean by that is the wire. They didn't strip it properly. Or they didn't do a good job stowing it in there. Okay. And... Um, so, uh, do they have a Coleman air conditioner? Yeah. Okay. So when you have a Coleman air conditioner, uh, in my other videos, you hear me talking about, uh, four wires. So you have a ground, which is yellow and uh, a red, which is 12 volts plus, and then two blues. Well, here's your two blues, but this blue is not being used. Okay. So the, the way this one works is the 12 volts goes to the thermostat and then it comes to the furnace. So the thermostat is putting 12 volts on this. Um, even though the furnace is sourcing the 12 volts the, in most situations on a Coleman air conditioner, the thermostat is sourcing the 12 volts. So we're gonna snip that off. <coughs> so what we can do now is open up the little gate there yeah, this is one, the ground has the whiskers sticking out of it. So we're gonna, that, okay, so in our inspection, that's another thing we don't like. Let me bring it a little closer, show you what I'm looking at. Okay, so here you can see where it's just sloppy wiring. So in our inspection, that's something we, we're gonna be cleaning up. Uh, you've got some sloppy wiring here as well, okay? And uh, there we go. So now the furnace is, is electrically isolated and um, while we're at it look so here we have we're going to clean this up too because when they put this one in um just the the wires are not really pretty and clean um it might work electrically but it doesn't really look very well uh, it, in other words even though this one's ground um let's say this was a hot side and one of these wires was floating around it could short itself out so we've got our electric loose now we need to get our lp loose so move you back over here what are you guys looking at? Right there, okay. Let's see, is it three quarter? Hey, yeah, play the lottery today. It looks like 11 sixteenths maybe. Yeah, okay. So, there we go. Now, the best practice I always do is I carry a little plug with me for LP. And I'm just gonna put it on there. Why would I do that? Let's say somebody comes behind me and they don't realize that um, I've got the LP turned off and they turn it on. Uh, so it's just a quick little, just a quick little thing to do to cap that off. So the furnace is ready. Now we need to take this back plate off right here and there's gonna be two screws there. And that's Phillips. Well, that first one is Phillips, so one in the back is a square. So then this back cover comes off, and that's where you're going to find your two screws that are anchoring the furnace to the deck. Should do it unless there's nope it's ready to come okay and now we have our furnace now I'm gonna move you guys back a little bit because there's just one more screw we need to take out then we can take the uh, whole furnace out so move you back well here let me show you the screw I'm talking about so on the back of the furnace see that screw right there we're gonna take that one screw out and with that one screw removed this whole piece will slide out of the carcass. Sometimes they might have a screw right there as well. Um, so there may be only there may be two screws that hold this in, but right now uh, that screw is not there. Only the one screw in the back here. So we'll take that out and this whole thing comes out.
Okay, so we've taken the exhaust port off first. We've rendered all of our wires safe, turned off our propane, disconnected our propane, took off the back cover, took off the two screws that are anchoring this to the deck, took out the screw in the back, and there may be one in the front. And with that, then this whole thing slides out. Okay. Now that it's out, let's take it and do an inspection on it. So we've pulled the furnace. I brought it in here to my mobile shop, the famous white trailer. Everybody wants a tour of this thing. I'll clean it up and give you guys a tour. Um, but uh, maybe for our Patreons, you guys will get a tour. <laughs> but um, so here's uh, the furnace. And what we're going to do is we're going to do an inspection. Um, obviously, it needs to be cleaned. There's a little bit of, of dirt, but that, that's not a major concern, um, really. What I'm looking for is gaskets. Okay, I want to make sure there's a gasket along here. Uh, we're going to be going into this and we'll be putting a new gasket on that. Um, where I'm really looking, this is the heat exchanger. And uh, right in this area right here, there's a crinkle or like a, a ridge. And a lot of times what I'll see is, is this part right here will crack. And um, if this heat exchanger should crack, then what that means is that the combustible flame on the inside has actually worked its way out and could get into your living space. Okay, so follow with me on this. You've got, this is the blower, so the, the air from the living quarters, the air from your RV gets sucked into this, and then it blows out through here. Okay, so um, all the air from the RV gets brought in here, and it blows across on top and bottom through this sandwich here. This part gets very, very hot, okay? And so you've got this much space, top and bottom, top and bottom where this air draws through it and then gets returned into your ducts. So there's not a lot of space for this thing to do the work if, if you're following with me on that. It's not like it's got like a whole long time to heat up. It's just got this little space right here. So the exhaust ports that are outside that we already worked with, this is where they come in. So this side of the furnace is where the the living air gets brought in and this side of the furnace over here is where the combustible air gets brought in and those two airs never meet they never touch okay um, the combustible air stays within this chamber and the living air blows across the chamber okay so follow with me on that now great we want to keep them separate where we need to do the inspection is on this um, heat exchanger part this is the hottest part right here this is where the burner is now we're gonna be taking this off and looking inside but where I've seen cracks is right here. This is where I see the cracks. I may or may not have a picture of a crack. If I do, we'll show it here in the screen. Um, but there's no guarantee. I've seen them and I think I took a picture. I just got to see if I can find that picture. Okay. So I don't see a crack here. So the heat exchanger looks very, very good. I have seen these where they're very rusty. Okay. Um, but the welds look good. Um, I don't see any problems in here. Uh, I don't see where any blow-by has been taking place on this. Um, I don't see where water has gotten inside and rusted the bottom of the heat exchanger. So we're doing an inspection on the heat exchanger, okay? And the heat exchanger looks good. Um, and now I'm looking at my wires. I'm not, I don't see any frayed wires. There's maybe something going on right here, but he's not nicked or cut. But something was causing this wire to have a weird bend to him. And um, so these wires look good. I don't see any problems. See, these wires here are the ones that are exposed to some heat. Um, and then they come to this back. Hold on, there's another kink in them there. Okay, so the wires don't have any nicks or cuts in them. And so I'm okay with these wires. But see, we're doing an inspection, right? We're looking for stuff like that. We're really looking for stuff. This is your high temperature switch or high limit thermostat. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, relay, thermostat or whatever. Think of them as a toaster. Now, this one's got a blue dot. They have a green dot and a blue dot. Um, when you replace one of these, you need to know your model number and your serial number. The model number might stay the same, but in a new series of serial numbers, they may have changed them. Now, this one, um, the customer did want me to provide the model number and serial number so for their benefit clean it off here it's an sf42 fq and your serial number is right there can you see that i think so yep okay um so now let me address something on this 
the, the the BTUs. Let me let me talk about that for a second. Um, I don't know that I've mentioned this on any of my other furnace videos. So this is an SF, which means suburban furnace, 42, which means it's 4200 B or 42,000 BTU or 40,000 BTUs. Okay. So oh boy, this is a 40,000 BTU furnace. Not really. Um, where the 40,000 BTUs is measured is right here at the input. In other words, it's going to consume 40,000 BTUs of propane in order for it to function and everything. So that does not translate into 40,000 BTUs of heat coming out of your ducts because I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm doing this from memory, it's like 60-40. Um, these things are 40% inefficient, I believe. So that means that 60 percent of your heat, 60 percent of your 40 BT, 40,000 BTUs is actually making it back into the coach, but 40 percent of the available BTUs is actually going out through the exhaust, okay? Um, and so you could do the math on that. What is that? 40, I'm not going to do the math. I'll do the math later. Um, anyway, the point I want you to take away from this is a 40,000 BTU furnace, that 40,000 is measured at the LP input at the gas input side, not at the output side. So file that away um, on that. Um, so visually, this looks good. Uh, we'll get a can of air and blow some of this out. I'm going to do that outside. Um, the control board, I don't see any problems with the control board. I'm looking for, for any components that may have gotten overheated. We'll look more closely after we blow this off. And I really don't even see a lot of dander um, built up on these impellers. In fact, I can see through all the impellers very nicely, so no problem there. Um, in here, you really, if you get your flashlight just right, you can sometimes, yeah, I can see in there. And um, so we're doing a visual inspection. The inside impellers, uh, that's a metal wheel in there. So um, no problem, I see through that. So what that translates into is we don't need to take this all apart just to inspect the wheel. If it was clogged or cluttered or filled with debris, then yes, we would take this apart, but it's, it's not. We did a job, I made a video of it. I'll make a specific reference to that one above, but um, where the furnace wasn't working and it turns out that we took this apart and it was because this, the combustion wheel had run off to the side and was rubbing along the side. And all we had to do was just move that over and everything was fine. Okay, so, so far the visual inspection looks good. Now we need to go inside and look at the burner and we need to look at the electrode gap, okay? Now to do that, uh, we're going to take all these screws off and here's a trick. You get a, I call it a crow's foot, kind of a, that's a five eighths on the end of that. And where we're aiming for is down in here, okay? Um, we need to get that off because that's part of the gas tube, okay? And um, sometimes these are really hateful to put back together again. And maybe you'll see that in a few minutes and maybe it'll just go right back in together. But sometimes these are really hard to get back together again. So the trick then, cooperate with me, please. Um, the trick then is to get your hand behind it and kind of support it and wiggle it as you are putting it back together. But right now we're taking it apart. And I like suburban furnaces. I just, the part that I don't like is you know, most of us techs, we have big hands and it, we don't fit in where this nut is. And sometimes it's really difficult. To, there it is, it's loose. Sometimes it's really difficult to get that set up again because it's down inside. Um, so now we take all these screws loose. So the only way to see the burner the only way to check your gap on your electrode is to take this off. Through this sight window here, you can actually see the sparking, but this is an inspection where we're going to inspect the gas, um, the, the electrode gap, and the burner head. So would you bring your RV into the shop and they do an annual service, 
these are the steps they should be performing on on your furnace now we do flat rate on all of our jobs so this is going to be a furnace annual inspection flat rate task it doesn't matter how long it takes me to do it okay there's a flat rate associated with the task but this also will involve a furnace we had to pull the furnace out in order to get the um okay i see something i don't like uh so as far as the how to bill for this um there's a furnace r and r where we had to actually physically take the furnace physically out of the rv and then the other one is is a cleaning r and r so there's two tasks associated okay so here's our gas tube okay now i do see a little bit of discoloration here and maybe even some wetness right there i just wiped it off because i wanted to make sure but where are we at here there you go so that's a little orifice. Now let me talk about that orifice for, for an orifice for a second. Gas tube, right? It's galvanized. I have seen where they rust on the inside, and when they rust on the inside, little flecks of of the rust will get caught in that little bitty orifice right there. So your symptom would be maybe you smell gas, maybe you smell the LP, that ethyl or captain, uh, and you hear the click, and everything working like it's supposed to, but you're not getting ignition. It very well could be that that orifice is clogged. Okay, I have also seen little spiders that'll go inside of there and make a nest. Insects like the smell of that ethyl mercaptan. And so I have seen spider webs in here. So the trick there is to get a can of office air, which I got some office air here, and you just blow that out. Okay. And I've, I feel some good airflow there. Oh yeah, yeah, good airflow there. So I do not like that it was wet. Okay, let me get a towel here. Um, the fact that that was wet leads me to believe that they might be getting some oil into their LP line. And again, like I said at the beginning, the oil is coming from... Actually, I'm going to take that apart for your benefit and also because I want to look at something there. Uh, now, I left all my sockets in the inside. So, let's just... Uh, t they're not on very tight shouldn't be geez i really want to go get my sockets but hold on i have some little sockets here the benefit of working out of my service trailer what are you what are you oh lucky day lucky day that's a nine nine thirty seconds guys okay there we go Okay, so what we're doing is we're taking apart this little orifice. And, uh, okay, so the back side is kind of blackened. Now, I'm looking up at the light. It's not clogged, but my question is, where are, you, where are we at here? My question is, why is that all dark and blackened right there? Um, that shouldn't be like that. Now, it does look really good on the inside of this, orif of this burn tube. Don't have any problems there. Um, none at all. Now, if, if we should clean this, if we should need to clean that, what are we going to do? Take one of those uh, files that you use on a MIG welder and just kind of file this thing out? Absolutely not, because you would be changing the diameter of our hole now, wouldn't we? So the only thing you would use to clean this is isopropyl alcohol. Okay? And a towel. So uh, he's clean. I'm happy. This is good. Okay. That's nice. All right, so that is good. Um, now, oh, uh, the jettings on these things. There's going to be a number. This is a 50. Uh, there's different sizes of these for natural gas or propane. So I'm not saying go out and just change everything over to natural gas. You really need to read your manual and make sure that your furnace can, can support that. But the difference is the, um, the orifices are different. But there's a number on this one. Okay. Okay. So that's all about the gas tube and the orifice. Okay. Sometimes that could be clogged. So let's put him over here. I'll put him up here. We're going to be putting a new gasket on. So we'll take the gasket and throw it away. Good. Okay. Okay. Now. Inside there is what we're going to look at. 
what I'm focusing on is this gap right here. There's a very specific place that's supposed to be over this burner. And I'll show you what we're looking for when we do that. Make sense? Great. Um, but we need to take that apart. So we're going to take the electrode out. Where's my other tray? Here. I keep these screws different from the other screws. Okay, we're gonna pull out the burner. We're doing an inspection. Okay, now here, here's a problem I see. See that melting there? That's not correct. That's not supposed to be like that. Now the question is, are we gonna see light through it? Um, and I've got stuff falling off on me. So I wanna shine my flashlight through that hole and at this point, I'm not seeing it where it's melted, but that's, that's not a really, let me change flashlights. The flashlight strobes with the camera. So let's see here, let's use this one. So what I'm looking at is that right there. We don't like that. Um, it doesn't seem to be affecting anything, but something's causing that to get really hot. Okay, now the only way to have seen this is to pull this whole thing out. The only way to pull the whole thing out is take the cover off. They have to take the cover off to take the whole carcass out. So you see all the steps you have to go through to get to this? There's no way you could have checked that short of removing it. So I'm going to take a wire brush and clean that really well. Okay, that's the top side. This is the bottom side. Now the bottom side is the side where if there was a lot of oil in the line, what I have seen is there's a hole that gets burned in the bottom of this thing. And if that's the case, your furnace is going to go woof, 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 you know, because it's, it's actually igniting and blowing itself out because of the percussion. So this, um, I'm going to make a note that they might need a new one of these. It, it's not leaking right now, but something's going on with this. Something's definitely going on with this. We don't like that, but I don't think it's going to, I'm going to put it back in. I don't think it's a problem, really. I'm, I'm not seeing... Um, that it's a problem, but watch this. So I'm getting a bunch of crap flying out of this thing. Okay. And, um, so this burner, this burner looks okay, except for this end right here. Now, let me take a flashlight. Where did I put it? Right here. And the question is, where does the electrode go? So you take a flashlight and you stick it in there and you see that light uh, see that little reflection of the light right there? Okay, so I'm going to take a Sharpie marker and I'm going to mark that. Okay, good. So now I can turn my light off and now you can see my Sharpie mark. So I believe the number is 5 sixteenths that side of it. And, um, and then you measure across left to right. You want to be it in the center. I'm just going to eyeball it right about there okay so i've made a cross but i need to go that way just a little bit so i'm gonna make a double-headed t like that okay uh, so here's our electrode now on our electrode we're going to be dumping this over and blowing it out on the electrode what i'm going to be feeling for is i'm going to grab the ceramic part and very gently i'm going to grab the electrode and i'm going to feel for any play at all in the metal part as it bonds to that ceramic so i'm just going to feel that feels very nice, okay? I don't feel any play. If there was any play in this electrode in relationship to that ceramic, then the electrode would need to be replaced. That would be another reason why your furnace might work and then for some strange reason, it turns itself off and back on and back off and back on. You can't figure it out. What I want you to do is gain access to your electrode. This is true on these suburban furnaces and also it is true on your Atwood Dometic furnaces. Hey, it's also true on your water heaters and your refrigerators. Anything that has this type of an electrode over the burner, if this metal part of the electrode is loose with respect to that ceramic, then you need to replace your electrode.
the whole the whole thing okay um but this feels good i don't see any problems i'm looking at the electrode i'm looking for any cracks it does not look like there's any cracks in this electrode um, i don't see where the wire is being pulled out so that's another inspection that we do now these things are kind of fun to dump out because it's all channeled but you can never get it all out but we can do our best okay the rest of this looks good now, I'll mention this as well. So I'm looking inside, because uh, that's where it's really, really hot. And this was that spot where that crack I've seen happen is. Because this is where the, the hottest part of the flame is. It starts to cool down as it goes. And this has got a little crinkle in it. Um, I think a lot of them have that crinkle in there. So now, reassemble Stephanie. So we're going to put this guy back in, noting that that is an interesting little burn component right there but the burner itself looks fine okay so we're gonna go and reassemble now remember those marks i made i want to put my electrode in place and then see if it is in fact over that spot Okay. And look at that. Yep, it's it's good. Now the next the next measurement we're going to take is we're going to take an eighth of an inch Allen key. I used to have mine painted, but the paint's come off. Eighth of an inch is the gap. Okay. So I am going to slide that right under that to make sure that you've got um, the correct gap. Okay. So. We know that our electrode is good. There's no cracks in our ceramic. Our wiring looks good. We have it hovering directly over the sweet spot where it needs to be. We've established that because we've shown a light inside this throat of it right here. And um, we made a mark where it reflects up. We went forward just a little bit and then found the center line and crisscrossed it. And now we have all of our screws. Now we have to put that little divider thing in. All right, so then we put this in. So yeah, the new design that Suburban has come out with is uh, a little different in here than this one. Uh, right there, okay. Okay. So, there is that part. Now, new gasket. Uh, okay, there's our new gasket. Um, it looks like so there's one, two, three holes here, but one, two, three, four holes there. So no big deal. We'll just use our pick to make new holes. This part's trash. Um, let me see. If you go in there, let me see if I have a part number for you guys on that gasket there. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, here we go. Okay, so uh, see that part number right there? You could freeze frame if you need to. That's your part number for gaskets. I buy like 10 of them at a time. And... Um, so you got the part number for the gasket. So there you go. Beauty. So now's the fun part. This is the part I do not like at all. And that is we have to align this nut with that. Now, sometimes what I've found is just a little bitty bit, not a lot because it's flammable, just a teeny, teeny bit of, of um, same time, I didn't even spray it. Didn't even spray, but yeah just to lubricate that to make it turn a little bit easier. Um, I just had a little bit on my straw. Now, well, now I sprayed it. Um, I have found that sometimes that helps, okay? It's a flare fitting, so that flare is gonna meet inside and this LP bla PB blaster is not gonna make it into the thing. If it does, great, it's just gonna burn up. So it's not like the end of the world, but uh, so here's the fun part. We need to get this, made it up with that, way down inside where my hands don't reach. Now, some of you are going to have a little metal stud that sticks up that's got a little nut on the end of it. This one doesn't. Um, now, what I've always found best is I try to get that screwed on before I put these, uh, these screws on. Okay, so you see how I'm able to move that gas valve around a little bit? Did I just get it? Oh, my goodness. That would be amazing. If it did... Oh my God, yes he did. 
I must say that's probably one of the easiest ones I've done. Normally you're spending 15 minutes trying to get these things to align and using all kinds of fun words to help it. Okay, now Great. Can you believe it? Um, I need to loosen that a little bit to be able to maneuver this. Trust me, people, I'm a professional. The one thing interesting about this is uh, as many furnaces that I've worked on, I don't know that I've come across two exactly alike. So it's always different. Even if the furnace is the same, where it's mounted is different. There we go, now I can wiggle this a little bit. And I worked on our Suburban just the other day, and that nut was like right there, I could get my fingers on it. Okay, I'm not, I don't dare take it off any more than that. Um, because... Okay, putty knife. What I'm trying to do, this is really tight right here. I'm trying to get that gasket in there. You know what, I'm, I'm, I really do not want to take that off, but I think I'm gonna have to. As lucky as I was, I'm gonna push my luck because that gasket is just not cooperating with me at all. And it is an important gasket. It's just that the problem is this, the screws, they're puckering up and they're preventing me from um, getting it to slide around like I want to. But what I don't wanna do is, um, I'm gonna have to. Because remember how I said I'll spend 15 minutes trying to get this thing off? I, I've already got it. Oh, I know my problem. It's, this goes down. I'm an idiot. Don't agree or disagree with that statement. Nah, I'm just trying to, because remember the part that had the, uh, yeah, I know what it's doing. I'm going to have to take this off. Yeah, I'm fighting this. Okay, that's what I'm fighting. So, there we go. Okay. So let's get that aligned. I want to put a screw in to keep this from moving because that's what messed me up last time. Okay, we won that battle now. Okay, I'm going to take it outside and just kind of blow off the uh, dirt with that. And um, then what we'll do is we'll try it out in here. Uh, so I'll be right back. I'm just going to blow this off. Okay. Let us do a full dress rehearsal on this thing. Uh, Remember in the beginning how their whiskers were ugly? That's what I think of that. <laughs> and, uh... Okay, so we've got the whole furnace back together now. And let's actually do a test to see if it's going to work. I'd like to find out if it's going to work on our bench test. So I've got my LP connected. I've got a 12-volt source using the power pack out of my battery. 
um, connected to the wires and the blue wire needs to get power to it. As soon as the blue wire gets power to it, then, um, then the furnace should light off. So let's do that test right now. I'm just gonna wedge that right there. Uh, hold on, there we go. Stay. He's doing about a, I don't know, 15 to 18 second pre-purge. Checking his sail switch. And uh, we wanna see him fire off and we wanna make sure that when he does fire off, okay, we have flame. Okay, I got a pretty blue flame on our window. When it does fire off, I just wanna make sure it's gonna maintain that flame. Um, in other words, he, we might have ignition, but then he blows himself out rather quickly. But, um, woo, hot. That got hot real fast. Ah, hey, don't touch it. So um, I'm convinced it's working, so I'm gonna take that apart. Now he's gonna do about a 30 second, 90, about a 90 second post purge. And um, so I'm fairly comfortable now that we can actually install this back inside of its carcass and put it back inside of the RV. Um, so we've blown off everything. In, uh, in review, um, for the annual inspection, we're looking for cracks, we're looking for gaskets, we're looking for clean impellers, we're gonna do a nice cleaning. Another thing we're gonna be doing is an LP pressure test on the line. We wanna make sure that the spec, that we're within spec on our LP. Um, on here, down on the sticker, this thing's still running and hot, but down here on our sticker, it's gonna say it wants uh, manifold pressure, 10 inches of water column, 10 inches WC. So we're gonna verify that it has that pressure. That's also part of our annual inspection to make sure that we have the right amount of pressure, that we have the correct exhaust put in, which we talked about already, that our electrodes in the right place, that our burner is in the right in, in the right place, yes, but also that our burner's good. We did find that little part that was kind of curious. I don't, that's not a deal breaker, really. Um, I think this thing can certainly go another season. Um, and then we look at it and we might find out if it's gotten any worse or if it's just some weird fluke that was from the manufacturer. Um, okay, so we are happy here. We checked all of the wires that go to the high limit and those wires are good. Um, no issues there. In other words, they're not being frayed or melted or going across sharp edges. Um, and uh, so here's a, uh, an early prototype. You guys get to see a prototype. So that we own another company called T3 Interface and uh, I make tools for you guys. And um, so this is a prototype of a tool that I'm working on. Um, I needed a test lead and in a lot of my other videos we talk about uh, my 10 foot test lead, 10 foot test lead. Well, I decided to make a better one and this one's, I decided to go with four feet and I solder these banana, stacking banana connectors on it and uh, they'll fit into the fluke meter, they fit in each other, and then I've got all these different types of connectors that, that fit on it, and um, I really like these here, because you could pierce right in. So um, anyway, I'll put a link in the description on this tool that I made. I'm playing around with different pouches. Um, this pouch here, the, they, it doesn't really fit really well, so I'm playing around with different pouches. But anyway, enough on that. But uh, yeah, so I'm making tools. So if you've seen me using tools that I've made myself, um, then uh, T3 Interface is the company that we just started where I'm making tools for you guys. And um, so I have two prototypes here. Each one of them is a little bit different. I won't go into how they're different, but I'm just trying them in the field to uh, find out... Um, um, links and connectors and things like that before I actually offer them to you guys okay 12 volts here okay so we need to do now bring that back in um, we've cleaned up our wires here and that way when we put them back inside of the Wago Wago I don't know how you pronounce that word but um, we're not going to have whiskers sticking out. Okay, so this looks nice and clean. Um, we're happy with this furnace. It gives a good clean bill of health for another season. Um, no cracks there. That's working really well. Okay, so I'm going to stop this here. We'll bring it back on the inside, put it back together. I think the next thing we'll do is I'll, I'll uh, do an LP pressure test on it. And um, yeah, you can watch me do that. In fact, here, let me tell you this. We just gave yourself a plug for the LP, for the T3 interface. Check this tool out. Um, Here's another tool that I make. So I showed you my test lead. Here's another tool I make. Um, 
for doing LP tap tapping into LP. So we know, for example, that we're going to tap into this gas line. So that's what the uh, the furnace has. And so basically, I'm going to put this right in the line that feeds this furnace. Okay. Now I went with a quick release. Okay. And uh, so I've got three eighths, half inch, and then I put a one eighth tap that goes right into a gas valve. You know, if you're doing a service on a refrigerator gas valve or something, even this gas valve might even have a, a way to tap into it. So I've got these three different types and um, there's another one I'm going to make um, that's going to be four where you can connect it to the bud on a stove top. So, so anyway, but I'm going to be using this one. Okay. And then this is the, then this will quick release to it. Okay. So then I'll have my manometer Manometer. Do, 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 do. So I have my manometer. My manometer connects to this port right here, a number 41 hole on the end, and I can tap in and turn on, and then I can read my, my pressure here. So I'll be using this here in just a few minutes when I get on the inside, but while we have some light, I was going to do some shameless promotion on our another tool that I make in the LP tap chick. Um, so the, this one's a prototype I'm playing around with. Um, what I'm going to be doing is making this one smaller. It doesn't have to be three eighths. I'm going to make it in quarter, and um, and then I'm going to compare it to see if the pressures are the same. I'm sure they are, so that'll make it smaller. But so also I'll make a link on that one as well. It's going to be on the uh, description below. But the website is t3interface.com for that. And uh, so we're going to do an LP tap jig. We're going to do an LP pressure test on it to make sure we're at 10 inches of water column. And then on the outside. Uh, we are going to take some butyl tape here and butyl tape up the exhaust port when we put it back together. So that's what's going to happen there. And um, okay, so let's go inside and do an LP pressure test. And then we'll bring this in. Okay, so we've zeroed out the tool. I'm going to go turn on the LP and then we will see what our pressure is. And the pressure needs to be about 11 inches of water column. The legend said no less than 10. So we're going to shoot for 11. Okay, so I'm going to run outside and turn on the LP pressure. Okay, we're at 13.5, which is well within spec. 15 would be an automatic fail, 10 would be an automatic fail. So in the bell curve of LP pressure, 13.5 is totally acceptable for this. Um, now, this port here that I have with the yellow gas valve, that simulates 50% load, and I will turn that on. We don't want the number to go much below 10. Okay, there's 11.2, so we're good there. So I'm gonna turn that back off. So if 50% of the appliances in the RV were consuming power, then are consuming LP, then that means that there's 11 inches of water column available for the furnace to run. So we have passed the LP test. All right. So now what we'll do is we'll put the furnace back in here, put the ducts back on, button it all back up, and then put the exhaust port on the outside. Okay, we're at the end of the journey. Um, you didn't need to see me putting the furnace back in, uh, putting those ducts back on. You see how they find a little key and twist. Um, we connected the LP, we did an LP sniff test. There's no leaking there. Um, reconnected all of our electrical fittings, made sure there's no whiskers. It went in nice and clean. Um, we cleaned this up. Ooh, it's hot. <laughs> cleaned that up really good. Put the eight segment looking putty tape on there, putty taped it, put some sealant along the top. So any rain gets in there, it'll work its way down the side. And uh, then we turned it on and it worked fine. So um, uh, it's got a great clean bill of health. All the issues that we found we addressed. The only open thing that makes me a little curious was that gas burner at the very end of it where that weld was. But when we shone a light through it, it didn't reflect the light through that weird part. Um, so it may be nothing, but that was something that I noticed. But hopefully you found value in this. You know what to look for if you're going to do this to your furnace. Um, I tried to give you best tips and tricks from the field. I've worked on hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these furnaces. And um, so I'm just trying to offer you best practices that I've discovered along the way. So um, we've got one more customer to get to before it gets too dark. And uh, so this is Darren from Agnew, Washington, signing off. Until the next video, make sure you like, subscribe, share it with your friends. So thanks for watching. Until next time, bye.